Hello and welcome to the Sports Vibe podcast. My name's Ryan Frussell. We're going to be joined today by Lee Partridge and Noah Abrahams. Well, let's discuss Watford, shall we? Back to the start of the season. Uh, five games in now. They're playing well. They've only lost one uh, and they're up to third. We'll recap the 3-1 victory against Blackburn and, of course, the 1-0 win against Derby. And look forward to the matches against Bournemouth at home and Wickham Wanderers away next week so we look forward to that also the FA Cup first round proper places are up for grabs and St Albans have a match on TV against Bishop Stortford so fingers crossed to them and we'll also discuss all our other local sides as well so we've got all that coming up and more on the Sports Vibe podcast Welcome to the Sports Vibe podcast with me. Uh, I'm Ryan Frussell presenting today. Uh, I'm joined, as usual, uh, by the squad. Noah Abrahams, our trusted sports reporter, joins us from up in Derby. Still partying like a student, are you, Noah? Yeah, loving it. Um, a bit more difficult being a student, but it meant that I was in Derby for Watford's 1-0 victory, so yeah. all good. Well, look, you're um, you're learning the ropes to become an even better sports reporter than what you already are. Uh, you were close to Derby at the match, but you uh, obviously obviously weren't allowed to attend because it's behind closed doors but you know you you were probably the closest Watford fan up there <laughs> probably um and you know what it was it was a good performance Jao Pedro solo goal what a goal it was yeah. the highlight of a pretty dull afternoon but Watford got the three points and that's all that really matters yeah we'll move on to discuss that match uh, shortly but I know uh local uh legend uh, and our drive time presenter Lee Partridge is itching to jump in <laughs> and say hello legend. to the listeners uh, Lee how are you <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. More of a legend, I think, these days. Uh, yeah, I'm doing uh, OK. I noticed you didn't use the word trusted. Oh, of course, Lee. <laughs> trusted. Trusted drive-time presenter. Yeah. The man responsible for getting everyone home every day. So. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, occasionally. It's, uh, yeah, great to be back on the podcast. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah let's, talk, let's talk more. Let's talk more indeed. So, um, since we last spoke, Watford have played twice. Obviously, we, we didn't record in the international breaks. Apologies about that. Sorry, wasn't much to discuss. Uh, and also, with the transfer deadline day, we wasn't quite sure who would be around uh, still at the club. And we'll move on to discuss that later. But it's been positive start since the international break for Watford. They're back. Beat Derby 1-0 away up in Pride Park. Tough match for Watford, that one. But it was a really good win. A fantastic goal by Jal Pedro, which, to be honest, caught me by surprise because I was laying on the sofa after eating my Chinese and uh, had to jump up uh, and celebrate, <laughs> which was quite difficult after after quite a lot of food in the belly. And then last night, um, at, uh, this is at the time of recording, quite a convincing in the end 3-1 win over Blackburn, but didn't really tell the story of the match because a lot went on compared to Watford's other games. Let's start with you, Lee, simply because you were at the Blackburn match last night inside the ground, you lucky thing. It was a good win, wasn't it? But it, it was tough at times. It was. But, you know, Rovers, Blackburn Rovers, they're a decent outfit. Uh, you know, they're well organised. They move the ball very quickly. They're strong physically. They're... They're a strong side. You know, they go well this year. Uh, they're one of the, They're going to be one of the, I, I imagine, one of the teams that will feature in the top six. I'm saying that early doors, but I think they will be. So I think it's a great performance from us. Created plenty of, uh, plenty of chances. Yet again, we move the ball quickly. If we want to talk about individual performances, Ben Foster, absolutely outstanding. Not just the, the, um, the, penalty save but his decision making and some of the other uh, world class saves I would say you know uh, performances from Nathaniel Shalabar he seemed to cover every every um, blade of the pitch uh, Saar you know his, his pace and he looked fresh after uh, you know, having a having a week's break or so um, and everybody else put in a good shift off the bench uh, we had Kapu come on and Gakia could see Kapu back playing he looked really um Really up for the up for the challenge uh, this year. That midfield and the depth of we, squad we seem to have is going to stand us in good stead with so many games that happen so fast. 
they come so thick and fast, especially this part of the season, that squad it could be key to it. Yeah, it's, it is a strong squad. I think it's noticeable when you, you're bringing players off the bench like uh, Etienne Capu, obviously replacing Tom Cleverley. I mean, last season that was tended to be the other way around. So, um, obviously, it's, for Capu to come back, it, it, it's going to make the the squad even stronger then we're not even spoken about Deeney, Will Huge, Andre Gray yet. Um, Noah, it was in the end quite quite a good win for Watford. Do you think Watford have the, the squad depth which maybe other championship sides don't have this season? I think it's noticeable as we mentioned the players to come back. Uh, do you think that could, could put them high above a lot of other sides in the league such as Reading who have started now but may not necessarily be able to go all the way towards the end of the season in such good form. It definitely could. I think Vladimir Ivic knows that too. That that Blackburn game was Watford's toughest test and they shone through it. Blackburn, you've got to give them credit. I mean, I think Watford only had 33% possession. On another day, Blackburn would have rolled over Watford. Um, but it wasn't another day. Ben Foster was fantastic. Like you say, Tom Cleverley was brilliant. And Watford have got that squad depth that when it gets to Christmas and the fixtures get heavy in January... And then when you get to February and you approach the latter season, I think that's when the squad depth would really shine through when injuries start kicking in for all of the other clubs around Watford, maybe Blackburn as well. Um, but there's very little to improve on from the weekend's game. Well, from yesterday's game, Wednesday night's game. Uh, they, it's the first time Watford have conceded at home all season for one. Um, perhaps they need to work on set plays, but I thought Watford were outstanding. Yeah, you mentioned the, the defence. Uh, it's been obviously the, a positive uh, start for Watford at the back. They look a lot more solid under Ivic's care where he's been focusing his efforts into. And Troy Deeney mentioned that yesterday on the Hive, uh, Watford's build-up uh, show. So Ivic has focused a lot of effort into that. I think yesterday, probably, Lee, it was the first time really that maybe there are a few mistakes coming into Watford. Obviously, maybe, I mean, you can't criticise Ben Foster, but I know he probably would have liked to have done better with that strike from Brereton. Uh, and, and also... Was Cabaselli a little bit lucky? We've seen that happen before in the Premier League where players have got in behind and he sort of takes them out and then Cathcart giving away a penalty. I mean, do you think this was just because it was a good side they were playing or do you think that, you know, it wasn't, they weren't exactly firing on all cylinders at the back yesterday? I think we have to err on the side of give Blackburn credit because from what I saw, you know, they, like I mentioned earlier, they did move the ball very quickly. Uh, a very offensive side. Uh, that's for sure. And likewise, we seem to be last night even more so. We created a lot of chances last night. It could have been, you know, it could have been four or five. That has been the question, of course, you know, whether Watford can score goals. But obviously scoring three yesterday shows that, you know, there are goals in the side. And I think that as Saar got in behind, you know, the Blackburn defence didn't really have too much uh, in the way to try and stop him. And I think, you know, keeping him is just massive for Watford's pursuit of Premier League football again next season. Noah, if you were to say, maybe put on the weakness of this Watford side so far, um, where would you say that is? Possibly in the defending. As I mentioned earlier, I thought from set pieces, Watford weren't, the best I've ever seen them. And, and the fact that Ben Foster had to make so many great saves and, and the penalty. And like you say, with Cabaselli, there, there were lots of, there were lots of small errors where I thought Watford could improve. Then again, you look at players like James Garner, who was back in the squad, I thought was, was fantastic contributing uh, with the second goal with that ball forwards. Plenty of positives. I think at the back, look, Ivic is getting the best out of them. Now he saw, he got the best out of Saar. I think he gave, so a bit of a bit of a kick up behind to, to say, look, you need to up your game a bit, and I think he did. He said he did the same with Tom Cleverley. Tom Cleverley needed that kick, and he got it. And look what happened on the on yesterday. He scored a he scored a very instinctive goal. Look, five out of six unbeaten, third in the league, three points off first. It's a great start from Ivic. Yeah, um, and let's move on now to uh, away from from the last two wins, Bournemouth on Saturday. Uh, Obviously, Blackburn have been mentioned that it was probably the, the biggest test of the season so far. To be honest, I'm looking at this Bournemouth match. Uh, they've also started strongly one uh, point below Watford, uh, fourth in the league, Watford third. Uh, Lee, this is. do you think this is going to be more tougher than the Blackburn game? I, I, I thought Blackburn played well last night. Will it be tougher? If you look at league positions, then that bodes that, that it will be. Uh, well, they, I think they've scored... 
uh, scored nine, led in five Bournemouth. So they still an offensive side like they have been the last few years. That's what got them out of the division in the first place into the Premier League. And they did, to be honest to them, they did play that way right throughout their times. You know, they'd score a lot of goals, they'd led a lot of goals in. Uh, there wasn't. I, I, I'd be interested to see the statistics on one nil Bournemouth games. I bet there's not been too many over the over the last four, five, six years. Um, it will be a tough test, but this is what it's about. You know, we, we've got to play these teams at the top, and when we play them, it's about getting the result one way, shape or form. It's about not losing to teams that are around you as well as beating them. And um, we, you know, we've got some great great players. We've got confidence going into the game. Bournemouth will be more concerned about getting a result against us, I think, than what we are against them. I think we will feel more confident against them than them against us. But that's my feeling anyway. So, um, you know, we've still got to play. It's, you know, the teams that are at the top, you've got, I think, you know, Reading top, you've still got Bristol, Millwall, bit of a surprise package so far this year, a lot would say. Swansea's still uh, knocking on the door. Brentford, you've still got Norwich, uh, you know, Stoke. There's, there's some big teams up there that, that have started OK. You know, this won't be an easy division this year like it never is. And it, it's a long haul. How many games? How many games in, is there in the end? 40, 46 games, I believe. 46 games. Yeah. And we're only six games into it. We've got 40 to go. Oh, what a season. Yeah, it's, it is never an easy division. And I think you've seen that before with sides going down that you think will bounce straight back up. Leeds, for example, you know, they spent, what was it, nearly 15 years, 16 years out of the top flight. Um, just unthinkable at the time of him getting relegated. And it is going to be a long haul. But no, I think let's look back at the last time Watford played Bournemouth in January of this year. Went away 1-3-0. Obviously, that was whilst they were under Eddie Howe. They're under Jason Tindall now. Obviously, he's his assistant bit similar to Watford in the sense that they have kept sort of the, the main thread of their squad, really. But they have lost um, a few key players from that side. That side, Nathan Ake, Callum Wilson, Ryan Fraser, their goalkeeper. Watford won 3-0 uh, down on the south coast back in January. Watford really looking at the squad... The only players they've really lost are, are Decore from, from the middle of the park, really, who's moved on, and, and Delefeu. Do you think Watford still will go into this match as the favourite, or do you think Bournemouth should be more confident about playing the Hornets? No, I think Watford go in as the favourites. I mean, the Cherries are on the back of two draws. That I think they drew Cardiff, and I can't remember who the other side was, but they've, they've drawn twice in their last two games, so two points isn't fantastic for them. Maybe that's... Maybe that's not the best time to be playing them. Uh, Jason Tindall's style is completely different to Tony Mowbray's and, and Philip Cock, you see, the miles away. I think Watford are the favourites. I don't see I don't see why they wouldn't be, to be honest. This is the best run of form Watford have been in in a long, long time, maybe since Javi Gracia's start. Um, so, yeah, I think Watford go into this game with plenty of confidence. I was going to ask both of you a question on Ben Foster. I, w I was going to ask you... Is Ben Foster, I mean, to both you, Ryan, and Lee, is Ben Foster the best ever Watford goalkeeper? Because a lot of people saying he's up there with Tony Cotton and David James. Uh, look, I'll go first um, because, to be honest, I, you know, during my time following Watford, which is really since I, I've sort of remembered it, I, I'll just go probably yes because um, he was there really in, in when I started to, to obviously really love Watford in terms of when they got promoted uh, back in 2004. Five or four, and you know, there's never been a keeper as good as him. I think at Watford, Gomez probably wasn't good. And then we're in the chat. Well, no, obviously Gomez was good at, uh, during his time, but I don't think he's up there with with Foster's level. Um, Lee, I'll let you come in because you know a few more goalkeepers. <laughs> um, it's a difficult one to say. Who's the best goalkeeper that that Watford have ever had? We've had some great ones over the years. You know, you, you alluded on uh, Tony Coton. Uh, he got player of the season uh, two two or three times uh, for us. And uh, David James, who went on, obviously, to play for uh, for Liverpool, uh, amongst others, and, and win multiple different things. You know, Steve Sherwood, going back to the uh, those uh, the glory Hornet days of the uh, of the 80s. Alec Chamberlain, how can you miss out Alec Chamberlain? The, the length of time he spent at the club um, and played in the top flight, putting some fantastic performances over so many years. Uh, ben Foster, he's had two spells of us, uh, you know, so you've got to put Ben up there without a shadow of a doubt. And his performances are very, very consistent for us. He's great for us. And I'll put him up there along the lines of, and I've, I've missed a few out there as well, that you could go along with 
Um, but I put him up there, well, well and truly up there with the, with the rest of those lads. And you know, Gomi, you know, Gomi was fantastic. I wouldn't say who's the best goalkeeper Watford has ever had because I don't has ever had because I don't think you can. Um, me personally, can't pick one out of so many. Lee, let me put you on the spot then for the Bournemouth match. Imagine you'll be lucky enough to be in the ground again on Saturday lunchtime. What, what do you think that the result will be? But oh, I tell you, we did miss out goalkeeper who was brilliant for for us, Millen. Fantastic, he was. Great goalkeeper for the first. Right, who, what do I think the result will be against Bournemouth? I think we're going to get a win. I think there's going to be goals in it. You know, they've still got some good players they had um, from, from last year that have stayed with them. Uh, the likes of, who have they got? They've got Goslin stayed, Cook stayed, who, who performed in the, in the top uh, king. Stanislas uh, performed in the top level. So it should be quite an open game, I feel. And I'm going to go goals, goals, goals. I'm going to go Watford 3 2. Wow, 3 2. Um, another busy day for Ben Foster in the goal. Let's hope he can <laughs> replicate his form on on uh, this week against Blackburn. Uh, Noah, um, are you going to come from a more conservative angle and think that Watford's defence are going to step up again? Or are you uh, seeing uh, results go the similar way to Lee? I think Watford will win this game. I'm going to go 2 1 Watford. I think Bournemouth will score. Because they have, they are, they're pretty strong going forwards, and you know they're not, they're not a bad side at all. So yeah, I'm going to go two one Watford, and hope that the form Watford have built so far carries them through. Yeah, I think the uh, dressing room is going to be confident. It seemed that way yesterday after Ben Foster's great interview on on the Hive after the win against Blackburn. Uh, I'm going to go uh, with a one nil win for Watford. <laughs> um, I, I think that after yesterday's result, I don't think. Uh, Lee, you'll probably agree, uh, and Noah, that Ivic will, would have been happy with that goal going in and, and the, the chances we, we were given to Blackburn. So I think Ivic is going to be a bit more focused defensively, uh, and I think that uh, will push from the back. So um, I think we'll nick a goal, and let's hope we close, close the game out. But I think it's going to be tight and cagey, uh, two sort of similar level teams, I think, at this stage. But... Um, will Troy Deeney be back? Lee, you were in the ground yesterday. Troy Deeney was there. Did you hear any rumours? Uh, no, sadly, I've not heard no rumours. So I'm not certainly not going to start any. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm unsure where that one sits at the minute. But it'd be great to see him back uh, as soon as possible in the, in the uh, squad and ready to be firing on all cylinders. That's for sure. Yeah, he did hint uh, yesterday that uh, he, he wouldn't say exactly to Emma Saunders when he's going to be back. Uh, she did try and push him, but he said he wants it to be a surprise for the fans, which strikes me as it's very soon. Can, can you even give an indication to that, Lee? Have you signed a non-disclosure agreement? <laughs> <laughs> My lips are sealed for once, which is not very often. But don't forget, we've got another game, haven't we, uh, next week as well, uh, just off the back of the Bournemouth game, uh, Wickham. So let's part Watford there. Um, good start to the season, and you know, let's hope for another victory on Saturday lunchtime against the Cherries and then uh, probably by next time of recording we'd also would have played Wickham Wanderers away at Adams Park. Let's move on to the non-league sides. I guess a success story really of a, of a side in our area is uh, Wildstone because it's been hard work getting the National League uh, back and you know we could talk forever about fans not being there but let's focus on the positive because Wildstone are up to ninth in the National League. Uh, it's been a fantastic start. Obviously, they had their game in hand on Tuesday night against Chesterfield, which they won 3-2. They won their previous match 4-3. So that they're not holding back with the goal scoring or defending. Let's start with you, Noah. I know, I know you like following Wildstone uh, and, you know, Lee, you as well. Both know people there. Uh, it's been... Probably a better start than we'd expected. Yeah, what a start for a promoted outfit. Two wins on the trot now, seven points for Dean Brennan's side, and it's looking good. It's looking strong. I think people expected big things from Wildstone with the way they completely dominated the National League South, and I think they're showing exactly what I think football fans, non-league football fans, expected of them in the National League. So yeah, it's positive. It's really nice to see. It's very refreshing to see Wildstone, a local side completely smashing the lower divisions and hopefully in time maybe not this season maybe it's a bit optimistic i'd like to think in the next three four seasons they, they can become a football league outfit yeah, fantastic it would it really would be to see them achieve uh, league status you only got to look at the teams that are in that division that have been in the league in recent years or uh, um 
off the top of my head. You got Dagenham, the Daggers, Chesterfield, I think all the shot within the last ten years. Barnet, Wrexham have uh, got have had league status many times. Knotts County in there, Hartlepool, Torquay, Stockport. All those teams have, have featured in in the league in one time or another in recent years, within the last 10 years, I'd say, 10 to 12 years. So it's great to see them compete in there and uh, well and truly in the mix uh, this early in the season. They're building momentum uh, and also building momentum are St Albans, who have started the National League South very well. Uh, they sit fifth. They didn't have particularly the greatest campaign last year. Lee, I know you're very close with a few some of the guys down at St Albans to so follow them closely. Do you think this could be a positive season for St Albans? Yeah, they've, you know, they've made some interesting... And some good uh, signings uh, over the last uh, six months or so. I've been very clever with those. And, you know, they've started the season well. Like you say, sitting fifth, seven points, unbeaten in, uh, you know, going back about seven or eight games, uh, including their friendlies, maybe nine games. But, uh, yeah, unbeaten in the league this season. Great to see all the local sides doing so well. Although Hemel have started the season struggling slightly. So let's just hope that they can pick up as well. But, good, yeah. Uh, great to see St Albans and all the, the um, local non-league sides uh, doing so well yeah. this early in the season. Yeah, you mentioned Hemel there. I was going to mention bottom of the league. <laughs> three losses out of three. So, um, sorry, not bottom. Uh, their fans, if they're listening, will go absolutely crazy. They're joint bottom by a goal. So, uh, they sit bottom with brain. Braintree Town, that's a mouthful to say. So let's hope they can pick up a win and claw their way back. Uh, I want to focus on St Albans because uh, I'm sure uh, Lee and Noah and the listeners would have seen the news and I think it's a positive story. St Albans, um, we're going to mention all the local sides now, uh, Barnet, Borenwood, St Albans, Hemel, they still have a chance to get into the first round prop of the FA Cup. The matches are happening across this weekend and into next week. But what's great to see is uh, St Albans' match against Bishop Stortford has been chosen to be shown live on BT. I mean, that must just be a huge boost uh, for for St Albans, really, with everything that's been happening. Um, Lee, I'll go to you. I mean, it's, it's great. And uh, I'm a big, as you know, much the same as all of us, I'm a big fan of non-league football. That All the clubs, they do. It's not just about what happens on that football pitch. You know, they're embedded in the community. And, and lots of people have been following their local teams, whoever they are, for years and years. They do great work in the community, so I, I think more, uh, definitely more, should be should be shown for, for non-league football. Um, St Albans away at Bishop Stortford, like you say, the FA Cup um, a qualification game. So uh, fingers crossed for for St Albans, and it's great to see it being the profile being raised of non-league football. I know I keep banging on about it, but uh, some non-league uh, levels have had fans back in. Uh, you know, numerous. You know, some have had hundreds and hundreds. Um, someone mentioned to me that uh, King Zangley had 400 odd people, 4 450 people at a particular game. So, you know, if if you can do it for one, you know, we should be able to start moving that forward. Hopefully, in a safe way, depending on how uh, these lockdowns and local areas move forward. But, you know, I just, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know what I'm like about it. I just think it's outdoors. Um, if we can sit in a restaurant, get on a plane with hundreds of people, then we've got to somehow manoeuvre to get a few people back to some of these clubs to um, support their local clubs. Yeah, and the FA Cup is so important to these lower league sides to be able to progress through. Noah, I mean, I know you follow local f- football yourself. You've been going off to to watch uh, sides while you've been up in uh, Derby at university. This season, I think, for a lot of these lower league clubs, because if they get that TV tie, it can make all the difference at the moment. Massive. Uh, I mean, I, depending on where the fixtures go and where I'm told to go this weekend. I may well be at Ickleston Town versus Hartlepool United, which is also on TV in the FA Cup. And I know how much it would mean to Ickleston Town because they're a small lower league side, getting the TV money in and getting just getting national attention is great for them. But it means because it's on TV, because it's the FA Cup, against a side like Hartlepool, it will be packed to the rims. They're, they are already selling tickets fast. I know that much. So, yeah, it's wonderful for small small sides like these. I mean, even for Barnet, when they got Brentford in the FA Cup and then they went to Sheffield United, I think two, three seasons ago, how great was that going up to Sheffield United with Barnet? It means a lot to the smaller sides and locally, it's brilliant. So yeah, I'm all for the FA Cup. 
I know they're talking about scrapping the League Cup, but as long as the FA Cup always, as the oldest football competition in the world, remains intact, then I'm a very happy boy. Just going to pick up on that. You're right about the FA Cup and it being what it is and the history that that, that um, precedes it. But, you know, the FA Cup, it's, it's all about those smaller clubs. It's all about the giant killing, you know, as well as the, as the big clubs. It's all about these players going to these stadiums they would never have played at before and the fans making the same journeys as well and it's also about big clubs um, going to smaller grounds you know we love doing that but lots of fans love going to big clubs small clubs wherever it is to, grounds you would never have been to and that's why it is so important to try and get some sort of um, some sort of uh, fans back into these games otherwise you know, if we if we used to play the whole FA Cup this year and you know, say St Albans as we're talking about them, or or any you know smaller non-league club, all of a sudden they get a plum tie somewhere, get into the third round, they get drawn away to Old Trafford and they go there. There's not a fan in there. Yes, it'd be a great experience, but you know for the players and for the fans, you know it would just be such a shame. It really would. Yeah, I second that. Of course, you know, we'd we love to see fans back. But, you know, I'm sure there's talks uh, in order to how to do this in a safe way and, and try and get yeah. some kind of normal back. So, you know, fingers crossed and best of luck. I know we focus on St Albans, but Willstone, Hemel, Barnet, um, who else am I forgetting? Boreham Wood. Uh, also have the opportunity to get into the FA Cup first round this weekend. So, um, uh, look, if they all get through, that's amazing. I'm pretty sure the chances are that one of the sides will get through. So, um, you know, hopefully we can follow them and their journey. Um, well, we're wrapping up now. Uh, Lee, have you got any golf updates for us this week? Uh, well played, Matt Wallace, who finished uh, second, I believe it was, last week. Um, and Callum Chinkwin, uh, so Matt Wallace finished second. Callum have retired in the first uh, on the, during the first round. So one well, of Matt Wallace, he was leading going into the final round uh, of the uh, Scottish Open, and he's off to Italy this weekend to play. Callum's not going, but Matt's off, so I'll give you an update all right next for week some. after how he's got on. <laughs> yeah, all right for stuff. Uh, and Noah, you got any other local sport you want to bring to our attention? Only only a good story about the FA Cup. It was I spoke to Brian Clough once, and he told me that they basically paid off the Pirelli Stadium when they got drawn to uh, Manchester United away from home. They went to Old Trafford, and it was exactly the same when they went to the Etihad, I think, two seasons ago. And he told me that both times from both of those trips, they've not only paid off the Pirelli Stadium, but they've now they've now put the money into the academy and into whatever else they're going to use it for. So it's a great moneymaker for the smaller sides as well. So I uh, don't think there are any updates, but I thought that was quite a nice story to share. Yeah, well, it is, and it shows the importance of the FA Cup, as you say. So we'll recap on those results next week. But for now, I think that brings us to the end of the Sports 5 podcast this week. If you've been listening and you have enjoyed it, of course, subscribe, tell your friends about it, give us a comment, and uh, listen to Lee Partridge's Drive Time show every uh, Tuesday and Wednesday from 5 to 7. He'll get you home, even if you're working from home and moving from the uh, kitchen to the to the lounge. He'll help you out. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push you along your way. <laughs> yeah. All the best music, of course. So um, you can find out more at 5176.co.uk. Um, that's it, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, Lee, what, what are you up to? I guess you're going to be at the match on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be at the match on Saturday. Going to try and get a bit of golf in. Oh, I did go down to play at West Hearts. Uh, I was going to play at West Hearts. Um, when was that? So it would have been Tuesday morning, but it was completely washed out. Uh, completely, it was raining from start start to finish, so we didn't even get on there. It would have rained from start to finish, so the uh, course was closed. So I didn't even get out, so I'm going to try and get out. Bit of golf at the weekend, bit of five-a-side uh, with some of the lads, and I'll give you an update on that. Not that anyone's remotely interested <laughs> uh, next week. Yeah, they all are. That. <laughs> <laughs> you're on my... You're <laughs> And uh, Noah, um, I, I can try and give you a sound effect if, I, if you want. Uh, what are you up to this weekend? Um, non-league football this weekend, so I shall be re reporting <laughs> and supporting. There you go, on the non-league side in Derbyshire. Fantastic. Uh, we... They're my sound effects, aren't they? You've yeah, got yeah, I found, found <laughs> Lee's, uh, he's got a wall of sound effects here. Uh... <laughs>
That's it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that brings... uh, oh. there's, there's Ryan opening his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, that brings us to the end of the Sports Vibe podcast. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, we, well, we hope you join us next week. Goodbye. <laughs>